the Adventurous Joe Show, the Adventurous Joe himself, Joseph Michaels! Welcome to this week's Adventurous Joe Show. I'm your host as always, the Adventurous Joe. And this is it, people. Final countdown. Eight weeks to go until the event, the series finale of the Adventurous Joe Show. And then after that, we just go into doing separate videos and everything else in between. So, okay. Now, anyways, getting back on topic here. This week's show, we've got our comic book review of... The IDW Collection G.I. Joe Volume 1 Hardcover. Jesus, this thing's big. Seriously, uh, it's big. And we've also got our video game review of Battlefield Hardline. I will tell you more about this when it's time. Also, our movie review for this week is Chappie. And the kids review is back with the SpongeBob SquarePants Sponge on a Water movie review. And anime review. We're, doing, we're going back in time to the time of the Samurai with Samurai Shampoo. And last but not least, our Cosplayer of the Week segment. So, let's get started with this little baby. In our comic book review, coming up next. Welcome everyone to this week's comic book review, and this is IDW Collections G.I. Joe Volume 1. And this sucker is, like I said, this sucker is thick and huge. Turns out there's like three trade paperbacks in this damn thing, okay? Now, to get things started right now, and let you know, this is not G.I. Joe, a real American hero. This is not the G.I. Joe cartoon series like you all grew up and knew and loved and stuff. This is IDW's very dark take on G.I. Joe. I meant seriously dark. I mean, it goes to the point of uh, people being beaten half to death in it. It goes to the point of people being cut in half by swords and stuff like that. IDW Collection's G.I. Joe is unlike any G.I. Joe comic that has ever happened before. Okay? Take a look at this. Even the story elements are different. A love triangle starts developing between Duke, Snake Eyes, and Scarlet. Okay? All over Scarlet. He, even the characters are different and stuff. And this is funny. This is supposed to be Roadblock. Okay? But they call him Heavy Duty. Which we all know Heavy Duty never had a mustache. Okay? There are all sorts of different elements to this story now. Like I said, the artwork in it is very dark, but very fantastic work as well. It even it works in more elements of real military style stuff like uh, operations and uh, covert ops and stuff like that. Medals of Valor that have to be locked away in a vault because they can't, they're not supposed to exist and so on and so forth. Okay, This book had it all. G.I. Joe, the IDW collection, I would have to say right now I'm, I'm going to go with at least an 8 out of 10 on it. It's very good, the storytelling is very good, and the, the artwork is great. The hardcover based novel like this, it's like three trade paperbacks all in one, okay? And the price on it is $49.99, okay? But on Amazon, they sell anywhere between $20 and $30 if you get them on pre-order, okay? During the time when they're for sale and stuff like that, they usually drop around $35. So that would be a good time to pick this up. Would I highly recommend you get it? Hell yes. If you want a different take on G.I. Joe altogether, a darker, grittier version of it, this is for you. Seriously. IDW did a fantastic job with the reboot of G.I. Joe. 
But see, the reboot is nothing like a real American hero or the cartoon series in general from the 80s. This is a very different take altogether, including the fact that Snake Eyes, you know, doesn't join G.I. Joe right away, okay? He, they want to recruit him into it, but he won't join, okay? Even though he's got a thing for Scarlet and everything, and Duke's got, you know, Duke has a thing for her and stuff, and apparently they start dating or whatever before, beforehand or whatever, but it's a different take altogether. Final verdict on G.I. Joe, the IPW Collection Volume 1 hardcover. I'm going to go with an 8 out of 10. Badass seal of approval. There is major badassery action sequences in this stuff. And the comic art, incredibly well done. Dark, gritty, to the point, and you've got no idea if your good guys are good guys at all. You know? And high recommendations. You check it out for yourself. If you have already read G.I. Joe, the IDW collection, let us know your thoughts down in the comment section down below. Okay? Now, we're going to move on to our video game review of Battlefield Hardline. Coming up next. video game review and it's on Battlefield Hardline. I'll tell you right now this game was totally different from any previous Battlefield games that always had to do with military stuff okay. Uh, it was all military based with the Battlefield games. This one not at all. Even though you get to drive a tank in it and shoot things up with it and stuff like that. This is not Battlefield like you know it, okay? This is Battlefield Hardline. Battlefield Hardline is the story of mm, cops, okay? Basically, you play a cop named Mendez who mm, gets, her, mm, gets set up for a crime he didn't commit and stuff when he finds out his ex-partner, his own captain, and mm, his new partner are all involved in it. Okay, and then you find out later on, and I'll tell you right now, spoiler alert on this one, your new partner is going to bust you out to help her bring down the other two. The hell? <laughs> the storyline is all over the place on this thing. And the one thing that's different, I will tell you right now during the review, is this battlefield hardline runs like a tv like a tv series that's 10 episodes you know it's like one of those hbo tv series kind of things it runs 10 episodes and every time you restart your game it does a whole previously on hardline you know wow what the hell right all right now, let's get on to that game footage, and I'll tell you more about the game. Okay, people. This is Battlefield Hardline. Now, as I said before, this is not like previous Battlefield games. We are cops in this one. You're a cop in this one. You're also becoming an ex-con later on in the game. When you you know bust, get busted out of prison by your new partner, who was your new partner before you were no longer a cop. Then on top of all that, the storyline aspect is great. Okay, it's a bit off, the, you know, off the beaten path about things and stuff that you know would bore the hell out of some people, like it did to Angry Joe. Okay, he he really hated that game. I uh, mean, to the point he gave it a five out of ten. Okay, I will tell you right now, Battlefield Hardline, in my perspective, was actually different for me. I thought it was pretty good with the whole mm, cops and robbers kind of thing, taking down drug dealers, working with a drug dealer, and so on and so forth. I mean, it was different than anything I've played before, you know, in a Battlefield game or like Call of Duty kind of sh stuff. I will tell you right now, the, the gameplay, pretty good. 
Okay? In some cases, not so good. But, like in the multiplayer, sometimes your guy just don't want to work right. Okay? Your team gets um, blown up too much or some stupid other crap. The lack of weaponry is even more startling. Okay? And, like Angry Joe said, if you dropped 120 bucks, you're getting ripped off. Because compared to Battlefield 4, where you had a lot of weaponry you unlocked and stuff, this one unlocks about maybe 7 or 8 weapons for you to use, even in the multiplayer aspect. Which, I was kind of disappointed in that. You know, the multiplayer is kind of fun, especially if you got friends that play it online and everything else. But, getting back to what we were talking about here. The story aspect is this. You play a cop named Mendez, okay? Your exact operation is to bring down the drug dealers. Bring them down hard, okay? Stop the drug war in Miami, okay? Here's the problem, though. You're doing exactly what your boss wants you to do so he can become the new drug kingpin. Okay, seriously, you don't even know this shit's going on. That's what's good about this game. You don't know none of this shit's going on until you, you know, about halfway through the game. I'm like, damn, are you kidding me? Then, like I said, spoiler alert, your partner, your new partner, played by Kelly, I believe it's Kelly who? Kelly, yeah, Kelly who, I think it is. Um. Anyways, she... Busts you out of prison. She gets the gets you working with her again to prove, you know, that the captain's behind all the drug dealing and stuff, and so on and so forth. Okay, she had like a change of heart of some kind. All right, it was weird shit, and uh, it's animosity at its best. Okay, your character will even show that animosity towards uh, the drug dealers towards your former partner, and so on and so forth. There's a lot going on in this that you just did not see coming. And it just gets better and better as the story develops. So, now, is it worth $60? No, not really. The story it only has 10 episodes, so you're looking at maybe about, if you've just played straight through, about maybe six hours of gameplay. I meant seriously, if you just went straight through your, and you just kept playing it and playing it and playing it, and you got through it maybe without dying a couple of times or something, you're maybe looking at about six to eight hours of gameplay. Okay? Not exactly a lot of gameplay to go on. Not worth the $60 price tag. Now, the Hardline Deluxe Edition was over $75 freaking dollars. Okay? Still, like Angry Joe said, $120, $60, $75, it's not worth that price today. 30, 30 or 40 at best, but not that. Anyways, we're going to move on to our final verdict right now. Final verdict upon Battlefield Hardline Deluxe Edition, we're going to go with at least a 6 out of 10, okay? I liked how the story developed, okay? But I hated certain aspects of it, like uh, the whole, in order to do certain achievements and stuff like that, you had to um, scan crime, you know, scan areas and stuff, find evidence and all this other blah, 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 you know. But then again, you're also a cop, so it's, a, it's an understandable thing. However, short gameplay, seriously, the episodes are only 10 episodes long. There's only 10 episodes for the whole game. Then you got the multiplayer aspect that is kind of wonky on things. And you would think DICE and EA would have fixed problems from Battlefield 4's problems. Okay, they did a little better on it, but not that great. Either way, my final verdict is going to be a 6 out of 10. Badass seal of approval, because there's a lot of great stuff in it that will make you go, oh, this is badass, is, you know, especially the tank battle. Oh, yeah, pretty good. Shooting helicopters out of the sky while trying to fight another tank, pretty damn good. And would I highly recommend it? I'd recommend it.
I won't highly recommend it. I'm a, it, It's not that great, okay? I was very excited to see this coming out. Finding out, oh, you get to play as a cop. It's different. It's not like Battlefield, you know, with all the military aspect all the time and shit. This was totally different. And I'll tell you right now, but it's not worth 60 75 or even 120 bucks. Seriously, if you paid 120 bucks, you're out of your fucking mind. You even paid around that much. Jesus. You know where I got this one? Do you know where I got my copy? I was going to get my copy from Amazon for $75. I won this sucker on eBay for $35. Brand new. Either way. Final verdict it stands at a 6 out of 10. Badass seal of approval for a lot of the great stuff in it that, you know, will make you want to be a badass about it. And last but not least, a recommendation to try it out. If you've already played it, I meant the game dropped last week and we already were putting our review together for this week's show. If you've already played it, let us know your thoughts down in the comment section down below. You know, it's a good game, but it's not what it made it out to be in the trailer, and everything else in between. The, the hype, a little overhyped. Okay, but still, a great game to play. Okay, now, we're going to move on to our movie review of Chappie. Coming up next. It's time now for this week's movie review, and it's on Chappie. Now, I will tell you right now, this movie is garbage, okay? It is like short circuit, okay? Seriously, the, the storyline itself, the robot himself, everything about it is like short circuit. Except this is short circuit with a violent twist. I mean, seriously violent, to the point that... Chappie don't want to kill humans. He don't want to kill anyone, but he's forced to kill. And then, on top of that, he's trying to say he's alive. Okay, like Johnny Five. Everyone knows this, all right? Johnny Five. I'm alive. I'm alive. You know, I'm a robot, but I'm alive. You know what I'm saying? Okay. Either way, the story aspect plays out just like Short Circuit. Except minus he doesn't get struck by an electrical storm, okay, or lightning hits him or whatever, and he gets his systems fried and everything else, and uh, starts to think, you oh, know, he's alive. No, the bot sees too many times where he's killing someone and stuff like that, where others like him are killing humans off and so on and so forth, and he just gets it in his brain somehow in his processor and says. I can't do this anymore. I'm like, oh my god. I, I, I am flabbergasted at this film. Literally flabbergasted. And Hugh Jackman was in it. Seriously. Hugh Jackman, the, the guy that plays Wolverine, was in it. And it was just a very fucking stupid movie. <sighs> I, I'm sorry. You know, Chappie was not that great a film. It was terrible. And the action sequences were pretty good, you know, especially when the robot goes into battle against people. But I'll tell you right now, it just was not worth going to see it. I mean, seriously, it was a solid rental at best. I mean, you could have waited until it got to Netflix or one of those, or a pay per view channel, then go to the theater and pay that much money out to go see it. No, it wasn't worth it. Anyways, final verdict on Chappie right now, I'm going with a 5 out of 10. It's the same thing like Short Circuit. I mean, there was no difference in it other than he didn't get struck by lightning, and he thinks he's alive. He starts spouting about how Chappie alive, Chappie this, Chappie that, and I'm like, it's just like Short Circuit with a violent twist. Ugh. 
Anyways, um, I would give it a badass seal of approval for the some of the great action. Game, okay, it was pretty good on the action sequences. Um, storyline about the same like short circuit, not that great. And uh, I'd give it a recommendation to wait for it to come to a pay-per-view or something. Don't waste your money going to the theater to see it. I hate saying that because, it, but it just was not that great a film, and I wouldn't waste money going to see it. So, there you have it. All right, now, we're going to move on to the return of the kids' review with SpongeBob, Sponge Out of Water, coming up next. <laughs> Welcome to this week's Kids Review. Once again, the Kids Review has returned, and we're reviewing SpongeBob SquarePants' movie, Sponge Out of Water. And I'll tell you right now, I'm not a big fan of SpongeBob SquarePants, okay? I just don't like him and his weird demeanor and the way he acts and stuff. But this movie was funny as can be, okay? Especially how they become superheroes, okay? They somehow end up getting transported into our world, and they're you know they're even they're like real life characters now and stuff. Okay, walking around and everything else, and uh, then they decide it, you know they want to become superheroes, and I'm like, oh brother. Okay, but. Uh, you know, kids loved it, okay? I, I gotta say it right now. Kids love it, okay? SpongeBob SquarePants is a bit funny at times. In this movie, anyway, okay? The TV series, not so much. <laughs> I'm sorry. I, I, maybe it's just because I'm an adult and I see things different than kids, but... Eh, live and learn. Either way, um, I'll tell you right now. Was it good? Yes. SpongeBob SquarePants, Sponge Out of Water was actually pretty good. Especially the whole superhero aspect. I like how they were they made themselves into superheroes to take down the villain who destroy was trying to destroy and keep control of Bikini Bottom and stuff. Seriously, it, the place is called Bikini Bottom. I, I I'll just leave it at that. <laughs> Either way, this movie had it all between the action, the goofiness, uh silliness and you know humor here and there it did not have any of that crappy violent stuff that you know you wouldn't want your kids to see and stuff the the action against the villain and stuff were funny the villain himself was funny too i mean he just you know he he wanted to say things about spongebob but he kept getting his name wrong he kept saying that that blasted a uh, fungus or whatever and i was like He's a sponge! A talking yellow sponge! How can you call him a fungus? <laughs> I'll tell you right now. SpongeBob SquarePants, Sponge Out of Water, I would highly recommend your kids get to see it, okay? Let them enjoy it. it it's, if they like SpongeBob already, let them go see the film. It was pretty good. If not, you know, forget about it, okay? But I'll tell you right now. I'm going to give it at least an 8 out of 10. Because it, unlike SpongeBob SquarePants, like I said, I don't really care for him and stuff. But the movie was pretty good in itself. Better than his previous film, where he had David Hasselhoff in it and stuff. It, it just was not that great a film. But this one, it was actually better. Okay, I liked how the characters were in 3D animation, you know, style as well, and it was better. Okay, and watching it in 3D was kind of goofy too, because especially. When uh, the one guy's flying, and uh, it's just like, and you can see it out, and it's like, oh, mother. Either way, I'm going with an 8 out of 10. Uh, bad butt kicker seal of approval. Seriously, it was pretty good. I mean, the action sequences, you know, nothing real violent. It was still good for a kid's movie, okay? And high recommendation for your kids to get to see it. If they love Spongebob Squarepants, let them go see it. It's a great film. But, if they don't, don't waste your money on it. Just wait for it to come to pay-per-view or something. You know, uh, let them watch it there. The movie only runs about an 
hour and something long. It's almost like a, you know, maybe a three part or so episode, you know, either way. The movie itself was good, okay? High recommendation, you kids get to watch it. And that's about it. So, now that that's out of the way, we're going to move on to our anime review of Samurai Champloo. Coming up. This is your anime review for this week, and it's on Samurai Champloo. Now imagine yourself back in this timeline where it's the days of the samurai and stuff like that, and you've got guys out there who think they can do whatever they want to women and all this shit, and there's nobody around to stop them. That's where you're wrong. There were two great samurai out there, and Fu ends up finding both of them and she hires them to play bodyguard to her until she's able to uh, something about either return home find her family or something like that I'm not sure exactly the premises on it I forgot all about it I mean, the show was not that great I'll tell you right now Samurai Shampoo was real boring okay at times it got real boring at certain times it was pretty good like towards the end of the series it got pretty good it was like it waited till the end towards the end of the series to get pretty damn good especially when the two samurai she hires are gonna fight one another finally they were gonna fight one another in the first place when she first hired them it's just off the wall crazy the anime was not that great the animation itself wasn't that great. You know, the characters were really poorly drawn and kind of in some places. You know, it just didn't hold that aspect of a good anime series. And I'll tell you right now, Samurai Champloo, I'm going with at least an 8 out of 10. Okay? It was okay to watch. It was pretty good on storyline. But it was starts off incredibly boring for almost like four or five episodes it's very boring okay nothing real great about it it doesn't really pick up in action and stuff like that until like the middle of the series I'm like seriously bad that is seriously bad and uh, I'm gonna give it a badass seal of approval because some of the action in it was incredibly good I meant especially when the two samurai were trying to fight one another and then they gotta fight everyone else and stuff and they're just kicking butt here, there, and there. And it's like, oh god. It just gets crazier from there. And uh, I'm going to give it a recommendation. Check it out. You can find it on Crunchyroll.com and a few other places that have an the anime series available for downloading or watching online. Either way, my final verdict is going to stand at an 8 out of 10. A badass seal of approval for some of the great action in it. And a recommendation to, you know, check it out online. Find it on Crunchyroll or one of them. If you want to own the series, you can find it on Amazon for the complete box set. Or the, the complete series, for that matter. For, like, under $40, I think it is now. I'm not sure exactly. You'd have to look it up. Either way, um, that's about it. Now, we're going to move on to our final part of the show. The Cosplayer of the Week segment. And wait till I tell you all about this cosplayer and why he is called The Smoke. Coming up next. Welcome to this week's Cosplayer of the Week segment, brought to you by Nerd Block and the Adventurous Joe Show. Okay, our Cosplayer of the Week for this week is coming is going to be featured in the upcoming. Uh, it's either a movie or a TV series that they're um he's filming 
creating and all that other stuff along with Dave Turner and a few other people called Trek Isolation. It's actually pretty good from what I've seen of the previews of it and stuff. And I think it's gonna, it might be even better, you know, you never know. It's going to be based on the original Star Trek and like a lost episode kind of thing, you know, or lost episodes kind of thing. Never know. Either way, he's also been a wrestler. Seriously. Thus, Eric Moran has wrestled for companies such as WCW, ECW, WWE, and much more. Seriously, I did not ever know this guy was a wrestler. I had to look this shit up. <laughs> Seriously, I typed in Eric Moran and wrestling and BAM! There it is! Never knew. I never knew. Either way, this cosplayer of the week has done a fantastic job with all the cosplays he's done from the reverse fl um, flash to um okay Joe your brain's going doomed here uh the character Smoke himself from uh, Mortal Kombat and uh many many more I mean my brain's just not wired today I'm, uh, I'm really sick not doing that great trying to get this over with <laughs> either way I'll tell you right now, this guy deserves your respect, your admiration, and he deserves to be the next inductee to the TAJS Cosplayers Hall of Fame Class of 2015. And speaking of which, we got the Cosplayer Force page up, people. Yeah! Bravo to us! Cos the Cosplayer Force is featured. You want to be a part of the Force? Join the Cosplayer Force. The link's down in the description to the official Facebook page. And once our graduates of the class of 2015 are done at the end of this year, they too will be on the Cosplayer Force page. How awesome is that? Seriously. Very awesome. Either way, let's move on now. We're going to show you some of his amazing cosplays and give big congrats to Eric Moran, The Smoke, for being named Cosplayer of the Week for the Adventurous Joe Show. Enjoy. week Eric Moran the smoke he's done an incredibly great job and once again he's also the next inductee to the TAJS cosplayers Hall of Fame class of 2015 and sorry about that 
you can see Eric the Smoke at upcoming conventions. We're going to be posting that down on the Cosplayer Force page and stuff. You can see other Cosplayers of the Week we've had on our show from Class of 2013 to 2014. They are all featured on in the photo section of the Cosplayer Force page. Like I said, you want to join the Force? The Cosplayer Force. Link's down in the description. It's open to the public and any cosplayer can join. It doesn't matter if you're new to cosplay and just only have a few cosplays that you're doing or if you're a pro at it like Yaya Han, Ivy Doom Kitty, Jessica Nigri, and many more. They're in there too. They're all invited to this page. They're all welcome to this page. It does not matter to us. We only have one rule on that page, and that is respect to everyone. It doesn't matter if their cosplays are not the great in, greatest in the world, or you think they're too sexy or something like that, and you want to say something stupid. Uh-uh. That crap won't be tolerated on that page. It's respect to everyone, or you don't need to be there. Okay? These cosplayers deserve to have this kind of admiration. They get to, they get out there, they do some amazing things, and sometimes they're not very appreciated for it. Seriously. People say all sorts of stupid crap on their fan pages and so on and so forth, and we got sick of that. We wanted people to understand cosplayers are people too, okay? And this is open to everyone. So if they want to join, they know where to find it. It's open to the public. It's called The Adventurous Joe Show Presents The Cosplayer Force. You can follow the link down in the description and, in, and check out some of the amazing works of Ivy Doom Kitty and stuff like that. We're going to be posting a lot more on it, doing a lot more. And we're looking for someone to do a, a different banner for the show. We had to use our, old lo our own logo and just did something underneath it and stuff. But if you want to do something different for the banner, for the um, the page, let us know down in the comment section below or contact us at on Facebook at Joseph Michaels or follow us on Twitter at King Atlas 1977 You know, anywhere. You can contact us. You can even email us at mynameisjoe500 at AOL.com or Gmail King Atlas 1977 at gmail.com. Either way, we'll be glad to hear from you. If you want to do something different on it, you know where to go. Okay, that's it for our show for this week. We have eight weeks to go, people. Eight weeks before the end of the Adventurous Joe show, as you know it. It will no longer be like it is now. Okay, a 30, 40 minute show and stuff like that. We'll be doing different things one video at a time. Seriously. Like, if it comes to the Cosplayer of the Week segment, bam, one video for that. If it's going to be for the comic book review, one video for that. So on and so forth. You get the idea. Either way, that's it. We're done for this week. I've been your host as always, The Adventurous Joe, Joseph Michaels. Peace out. May the Force be with you, and may the power protect you all. Have a great weekend, folks, and may the Force be with you. Some alien life force has sent real life video games to attack us. Pac Man's a bad guy?
Donkey Kong. It's just a barrel. How bad can it hurt? The only way to take down Pac-Man is with ghosts. You want ghosts? These are your ghosts. Oh, yeah! We're the only ones who can do this! I'm kidding. We are all gonna die. I'm just... sorry. May I introduce to you Professor Iwatani, the creator of Pac-Man. Pac-Man is not bad. You see. Professor Iwatani, what are you doing? I will talk to him. He's my son. Hello, my sweet little boy. Look how big you've grown. That's so sweet. He's so sweet. I know. You're a good boy. Ah! Somebody annihilate this stupid thing!